That's one of the things that uh, I think Half-Life 2 sort of made one of its marks or, you know, one of its hallmarks, if you will. Uh, Jay Stelly and a bunch of the other great engineers at Valve worked a long time developing the physics system. And the first time we saw him have sort of a polygon uh, stick that was the early version of the gravity gun and he was tossing around combine soldiers, we knew that something good was going to come of that in the gameplay once the designers got their hands on that technology. Nice. So here we're putting the physics to good use with the hunters. Uh, one of the best ways to fight them when they're not knocking stuff out of your hands is to take the gravity gun and use the physics objects against them uh, in combat along with your traditional arsenal. What gun is that? That is one of the combine uh, uh, rifles that uh, you've managed to sort of procure and sort of use against them and their forces. Oh, and I just oh, died. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Fire back up. We got plenty. We got plenty to talk about. You can you can keep fighting. For people who don't know the whole story of Half Life Two, uh, can you give us a, a quick overview? Not don't give too much away because I know there's going to be a lot of schlubs like me who haven't got a chance to play Half Life Two yet because they're waiting for it on the 360. Yep. So without giving too much away, you got Gordon, you got Alex, you got crazy bad guys. Yep. Tell us more. <laughs> Tell us more. So, uh, of episode two specifically, or of uh, Half-Life 2? The whole thing. The whole We're thing. We're going to bring in new people for you here. All right. So the story began with you as sort of this uh, ho-hum, you know, research assistant at a facility uh, called Black Mesa, which was somewhere, oh, I just died again instantly. You got an explode, talk for a minute. Exploding, exploding <laughs> dart right in the face like that, that'll get you. <laughs> so this, the story began as you as sort of this lower level research assistant at this facility uh, in, somewhere in New Mexico called Black Mesa. Right. While doing uh, uh, an experiment on, uh, you know, some alien creatures and whatnot, you accidentally open up a portal. Oops. And the aliens come in and they're basically you know, ready to sort of uh, lay waste to you and sort of get their revenge for, you know, you sort of experimenting on their brethren and what have you. <laughs> um, you know, pandemonium breaks out. It moves from just from Black Mesa to a global scale. And there's sort of a, a multi-layered uh, conflict, if you will, between uh, the Combine, uh, the resistant forces, and then there's this mysterious guy known as the G-Man. Um, who is, uh, has his hand somewhere in all of this and is kind of mysterious exactly how he fits in. Um, Half-Life 2 moved from Black Mesa to the more international scale um, to a place called City 17, which was set somewhere in northeastern Europe. Right. Um, and all of Half-Life 2 and Episode 1 took place there. And now in Episode 2, we're moving beyond that into the White Forest and beyond uh, as we move towards Episode 3. Nice. And then, and so when's episode three coming out? Uh, I don't have a date for episode <laughs> three yet, but uh, we are in pre-production on that. Cool. And it is going to be a magnificent finale to the, to the trilogy. Awesome. Are you ready to take some questions from the audience? Sure, let's do it. All right. Hey, Jody <laughs> Robinson, you're still here, right? Yes, I am. You got some questions for us? Yes. Uh, is it possible to buy episode two, TF2, and Portal without having to buy episode one in Half-Life 2? Ah, good question. Good question, indeed. Uh, we are, you know, with Steam, we have the ability for the PC players to uh, purchase their games in a multiple variety of packages. Right. Folks who have sort of watched what we've done with Steam with, you know, when Half-Life 2 came out, it was sold in three different varieties on Steam with the, the bronze, the silver, and the gold package. Right. Later on, uh, you know, you could buy Counter-Strike Source by itself and Half-Life 2 by its source, and now you can buy a multiplayer pack or the Valve Ultimate pack. So Steam allows us a lot of flexibility to sort of custom tailor packages to customers' desires. So we're listening to a lot of what folks are saying, and, and uh, you know, as we get closer to launch, we'll be announcing more plans and be rolling out more packages, and I'm sure post-launch, we'll probably, you know, do a little theme and variation on that as well. I love the preloading stuff, too. That is, that is such a nice way to, like, cut down on the wait for a game. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, we'll, give you, we'll give you a lot. No, you, you practically have the game. Now you just wait, and we'll, we'll knock it for you. That's a, that's, a, that's a cool way to do things. That's right. And, it, and it, it's one of those things that is both available for the Steam customer as well as for the retail customer. You know, the retail customer can preload stuff. The retail right. customer gets all the same benefits that Steam provides, whether it's automatic updates or, you know, free weekends of trials of new products, et cetera. So we really believe that Steam is uh, something more than just a downloader, that it's actually something that makes our products better and sort of is moving further to bring digital entertainment and gamers together. Cool. You ready for some more questions? Yeah, let's do it. Jody, next question, please. Martin Forrest from Sweden would like to know, is there auto-aim in the console versions? Ah. When we did uh, Counter-Strike for Xbox One and Half-Life 2 for Xbox One, we spent a lot of time working on the Source engine and optimizing both the engine and the mechanic of the gameplay for the controls there. So there is some very slight auto-aim in there, uh, but we're 
doing our best to never make it feel like the game is taking over it for you and that, that you're actually in control there. But we, we very much want to make sure that you're never battling the interface and that you're battling the opponents instead.